November the 24th, 2022 marked the 10 year anniversary of one of gaming's biggest mysteries being revealed. The director of Club Penguin's Elite Penguin Force was none other than everyone's favourite penguin journalist, Antarctic. To put this into context, in 2012 this was a bigger deal as GTA V's Mount Chilean mural, the secret portal in Minecraft's Deep Dark, or who broke Dream out of prison in the Dream SMP. But what if I told you that this historic reveal, which had over 1.8 million users online at once, was a complete lie? My name is Papoli, and today I'll be diving into what Operation Blackout was, why the director's reveal was so important, and ultimately proving why it isn't Antarctic. Buckle up. Operation Blackout began on the 14th of November 2012, kicking off with the disappearance of fan favourite Gary the Gadget Guy. It was later revealed that Herbert P. Bear was planning to block out the sun in order to steal all of his energy to keep himself warm. In order to increase his chances of success, Herbert chose to kidnap all agents of the EPF, including Dot, Rookie, Jetpack Guy, and finally, the Director. After bypassing all five security terminals, the player is able to make Herbert's base self-destruct and free all five captured agents. Once safely outside, the mysterious director thanks you directly, finally stepping out of the smoke to reveal Aunt Arctic. While some penguins found this reveal to be the biggest plot twist of their lives, others say they saw this coming from a mile away, and they weren't wrong for suspecting this. For one, in the Club Penguin Times, Antarctic's newspaper, if you hovered your cursor over the author's face, her normal reading glasses would be replaced with mysterious spy-like sunglasses. Another huge hint for players was the director's signature. The EPF had a secret alphabet system. This alphabet had 27 possible letters, with the first 26 being the 26 letters of the English alphabet and the 27th being the director's signature. Whilst many, myself included, took this to further cement the director's mysteriousness, others took the letter after Z to mean AA, or Antarctic. Finally, and probably the biggest piece of evidence, was in the 2012 to 2013 Club Penguin yearbook. If you hovered over our favourite journalist's name, a secret message from the director would pop up. So you're probably thinking, okay cool, so it is Antarctic, all the evidence points to her, What's the point in this video? Well, if you think that evidence is damning, then get ready for the evidence to prove that she's nothing more than a fallback. Someone to take the heat if the director was ever at risk. A fake out to reduce suspicion to protect the director's real identity. Jumping right in at the deep end of the iceberg, the biggest piece of evidence for Antarctic not being the real director once again comes back to the newspaper. In every edition of the Club Penguin Times, there was always a top secret folder containing secrets from the Club Penguin Island, very often concerning the EPF. Why would the head of a top secret agency put their own secrets in a newspaper for every penguin on the island to read? You see, I believe that after this secret section was initially added to the paper, the secret started to be given to Antarctic by the director in a deal to give exclusive information in return for Antarctic to not dig into the EPF and reveal potentially dangerous information. This would explain how Aunt Arctic gets hold of secret information without the implications of leaking it herself. Alongside this, Aunt Arctic is not only the first mascot in Club Penguin, but also one of the most famous. Having someone being extremely open, doing weekly interviews and constantly talking about herself is the exact opposite of what you'd want from a secret agent leader. She's too high profile to double as a director, on top of potentially being the busiest penguin with the weekly papers. That, on top of running field ops, managing agents, and monitoring the island, it would just not be possible for her. And if you're still not convinced, in the very first PSA mission, the player must help Antarctic herself in rescuing her two runaway puffles. In this mission, she is in hysterics and does not leave her igloo for the entire duration. Some penguins speculated that this was a test Antarctic did as the director to see her new agent in action, but, Here's why it can't be. For one, is she really going to be putting her puffles in danger for every single new recruit the EPF hires? What about Rookie? I'm sorry ma'am, 
But those puffles are dead. And if she's in her igloo the entire time, how would Antarctic be able to see how you're doing? She can't see your investigating skills, your interrogation abilities, your savviness with the spy phone, or your morality in terms of rescuing the penguins stranded on the iceberg. If the director wanted to see you in the field, making themselves the centre of the case and unable to witness anything would be the worst way to do it. Finally, do you really think Aunt Arctic would put her puffles, what she claims to care about more than anything else, in danger? Willingly? In case it's been a while for you, the puffles end up stranded on top of the tallest mountain in the game. Would you put your puppy up there to test a new employee? Any sane penguin wouldn't do that without special protection from someone with great puffle experience. It's irresponsible and would go against everything we know about the director. Is Aunt Arctic related in some way? Yes, she is definitely an affiliate of the director. It's possible she agreed to be the fallback for a worst case scenario like Operation Blackout, but she is definitely not the director themselves. In the years leading up to the ultimate reveal, there were several popular theories online on who the secretive EPF director could be. The most popular ideas aside from Antarctic were G. Dot, Rory and for some reason PTK. Now before we jump into what these theories entailed, I'm going to let my good friend Sea Slug explain her personal idea on who the director was growing up. Hopefully this highlights that this idea that Antarctic is a fake hasn't just been pulled out of nowhere, as well as show that there are monumentous piles of evidence for so many other penguins, making them just as likely, if not more so, than Antarctic for being the director. So, I just want to preface this whole thing by saying that I've never played the DS games before. I've never played them, I've never watched anything on them, I've never read up on them. But I thought it was Gary for the longest time. And I was probably like 12 years old at the time, so there's not really a deep logical conclusion to why I thought it was Gary, but my reasoning was like, oh, Gary's just the smart guy. He's been involved in the PSA. He's the smart inventor dude of the island, so obviously it's gotta be him, right? I wouldn't have put it past him that he was communicating with us from wherever he was held captive. And I thought either he was trying to lead us to him so we could help him escape, and then they completely threw me for a loop when they revealed that it was Antarctic. It was just the very, very last thing that I expected. And on top of this, G also had the technical ability to blend himself into a silhouette like we see the director do regularly. And he also held a senior position in both the PSA and the EPF, giving him access to more resources than the most regular agents. Again, he's arguably the most intelligent agent on the entire island. However, in both System Defender and Field Ops, he is seen communicating directly with the director. He is captured before the director is on Operation Blackout, as well as being unconscious in the beginning of Club Penguin Elite Penguin Force on the DS, where you have several conversations with the director, meaning that G is a valid, but frankly impossible suspect. Rory was an immensely popular theory amongst fans, despite not being that well known of a character. Rory is a construction worker seen throughout several PSA missions and often helping the player by giving vital information through witness accounts. This was considered to be a potential ploy by the director to see the agent work in the field firsthand, like people suspected of Antarctic in the case of the missing puffles. On top of this, Rory was also the penguin that constructed both the PSA and EPF headquarters, which would mean he was aware of all secret rooms and locations of the secret agents. However, despite these reasons, there is nothing directly connecting Rory to being the leader of a secret organisation. In fact, in Mission 11, the Veggie Villain, Rory requires help in fixing a telescope lens. Do you really think that the director would have trouble with such a minor problem, especially in the middle of the island's biggest ever crisis at the time? Remember, this is the mission that destroyed the PSA. Plus, why would the director hold out on vital information in numerous island disasters? Rory is a helpful civilian and a popular penguin, but definitely not an undercover mastermind. Dot, first appearing after the explosion of the PSA, helps G, Rookie and Jetpack Guy transition from the PSA to the EPF, 
which was a backup facility created by the director in case of emergency. Fans wanted to know why Dot knew about this secret backup, but no other agents did. Dot is also known to be a master of disguise, as seen in the DS game, which would fit with them blending in and keeping a great cover as the director. Dot could easily be any Penguin bystander in any of the missions without anybody suspecting a thing. This theory was by far the most popular back in the day, until ultimately, just like the G theory, Dot was captured and frozen by Herbert in Operation Blackout almost an entire week before the director was, meaning they could not have been sending messages to you in that time. Finally, some players thought that the director was PTK because the EPF theme song features an electric guitar. It is revealed that both PTK and his bandmate Frankie used to work in the pet shop, which would give them great experience in training Puffles, which would be very useful with the elite Puffles. But aside from that, I don't really get this theory. Maybe because he has glasses? So with those popular theories out of the way, let's quickly eliminate all the other penguins that a director can definitely not be. Let's start with Rockhopper. This one is fairly straightforward. He's never at the island, so how could he know what was going on? In fact, Rockhopper didn't return to the island until over a month after Operation Blackout had ended, making it impossible for him to be aware of the island situation and be unable to provide the player with the equipment they needed to save everyone. Cadence is the head DJ of the dance club and my childhood crush. In a comic book from 2014, Diva Napped, Herbert kidnaps Cadence for making too much noise. This makes her the only non-EPF associated penguin to be kidnapped, which could be seen as a sign that she secretly is the director. However, our favourite DJ has an extreme fear of bugs. In the final System Defender level, Track Herbert, the director is involved and has no reaction to the extreme amount of bugs being launched into the EPF database. Obviously, real bugs and computer bugs are totally different things. However, in the very first System Defender level, Rookie compares the two as interchangeable, as well as them being stored in a jar. Meaning that in the Club Penguin universe, computer bugs are also physical bugs, meaning that Cadence cannot be the director. Just like Peter K and Frankie, the other band members, G Billy and Stomping Bob, do not fit the criteria of the director due to being loud, carefree band members that are always around each other and writing new songs. It isn't feasible for any band member to be the director. If a crisis occurred during a party or performance, none of the musicians would be able to sneak away unnoticed. It's just not possible. So, this leaves us with Rookie, Sensei, and a surprising candidate that you won't expect, the Test Bots. But before we go into our final three, let's make sure we know what we're looking for. We know who isn't the director, but what makes someone the director? What do we actually know about them? For starters, and most obviously, the director appears as a silhouette on a screen at all times, never showing any distinct features apart from shades and a beak. We also know that the director is both highly experienced and highly trained, enough to teach all the agents everything they need to know, and able to keep a calm composure at all times. We know that the director must have a secret base that even most agents don't know about, as they need somewhere to be recorded for their screen appearances. They can't exactly pull up a camera crew in the pizza parlor, can they? The director also must have links to Antarctic to be able to have a deal to feed unessential information to the paper, as well as being able to convince Antarctic to pose as the director in Operation Blackout, leaving red herrings all over the island leading to a... It must mean the director is pretty good friends with them. Who could that be? Let's start with Rookie. Rookie was first introduced in the third PSA mission, Case of the Missing Coins. Right off the bat, we are shown that Rookie is a klutz, unintelligent, and a liability, despite his adorable enthusiasm. However, despite this, he is still one of the most notable EPF agents, alongside Genius G and capable field operative Jetpack Guy. How? 
Is he there because he knows too much? Does he have a secret skill set we don't know about? Rookie even accidentally caused a virus attack on EPF servers. Either he's an extreme liability as an agent, or he does these things on purpose to lie low, avoid suspicion, test the agents. Sometimes in emergencies, he'll bring out an ability nobody knew he had, like speaking crab. He's even friends with Antarctic, having his own column in the paper on numerous occasions, and potentially having even more hidden secret skills. Okay, okay, I won't leave you in the dark for too long. What about our left field players? The Test Bots. First appearing in Elite Penguin Force, the Test Bots are free robot penguins built by Gary to test his dangerous gadgets, due to their metal shells being much more robust than the feathery skin of penguins. And despite being major villains in both the DS game and System Defender, the director is never seen interacting or even discussing the Test Bots. It would explain the shadowy figure the director shows, as well as the high intelligence they both seem to possess. The director is always calm and collected, almost like a robot. So what if I told you that the director was actually an AI that not only hired G, but also instructed him to build the test bots for them to just secretly inhabit? It would be the ultimate secret identity. With there being three test bots too, it would explain how the director could get so much information on the island. Jetbot in the sky, Snowbot in the wilderness, and Wheelbot to keep an eye in the EPF facility covertly. So this leaves us with the oldest and wisest penguin on the island. And that is Sensei. Let's start with the elephant in the dojo. The ninjas. Once you complete your bout journey in Kajitsu, you become a ninja, which gives you the ability to do what? That's right, turn into a shadowy figure, just like the director. And even though it's not exactly the same colour as the director, Sensei can also be seen having a greater skill level with this ability, to the point where he can completely turn invisible. So if he can turn into a shadow and invisible, he can absolutely turn into a more opaque figure. But if you need more proof than that, what if I once again reference the first DS game, Elite Penguin Force, where you were tasked of finding a top secret EPF room. Now where could this room be found? Where else than the dojo? Not only is this a top secret room that most agents don't even know about in Sensei's home, but in contrast to the main EPF and PSA headquarters, the dojo wasn't built by Rory or any other construction team. The dojo was built single-handedly by Sensei, meaning he knew this room was there and put it there for a reason. No matter how much you progress in card jitsu or in any of the elements, they never trust the ninjas with this room, only appearing again in Club Penguin Rewritten, which was fan-made and is non-canon. However, in the fan-made version of the room, it was turned into a sanctuary for Grey Puffles. Again, this isn't canon, but it just transitions me nicely to Sensei's fascination of Puffles. He doesn't own any, but has a great interest in them and features them in several card Jitsu power cards, showing that he does have some sort of experience and control over them. Now, I don't think we even have to go into how skilled Sensei is either. He is a master of the three base elements, plus a secret fourth element, which we'll come back to in a moment. He built an entire dojo himself and is referred to by other mascots as the wisest penguin on the island, as if that was up for debate. In the dojo, he is always seen meditating, keeping himself calm and at peace. He has never once seen worried or anxious throughout his nine years in game. Sensei is also good friends with Antarctic, as revealed when he took over her newspaper advice column at a point, as well as revealing five statements in issue 460, claiming one of the five to be true. Some ninjas practice the secret fourth element of shadow. This further proves that Sensei could have greater ability when manipulating his shadowy appearance when appearing as a director, as well as being able to go anywhere on the island potentially unnoticed. So that was all the suspects. There's evidence for all of them, but all the counterpoints just don't wrap up nicely enough for me. Rookie, along with all the other agents, was frozen for almost a week prior to the director ceasing communication with the player. The test bots literally built the ultimate protobot 10,000 that failed to destroy the entire island. Plus, where did they come from in the first place? And since these ninjas literally declared war on the EPF back in 2010, 
when it was revealed that all five statements were true, that cemented the fact that the ninjas and secret agents cannot have the same leader. When I hit this wall, I genuinely reconsidered everything. I knew in my heart that it couldn't be Antarctic. But who could it be? In my frustration, I picked up my Nintendo DS, put in the DS game, and tried to forget my troubles. And when I least expected it, I found them. See, what have I told you that there was another penguin that was an EPF agent that was also great friends of Antarctic, has been seen in a top secret EPF room, has never been seen alongside the director, even in field up conversations, and has incredible experience with training puffles, both wild, domestic and elite, as well as having a complete change in their appearance between their last appearance to the player as an agent before becoming a very popular mascot. That's right. I'm talking about Paige. Paige, better known as Puffle Handler, was first introduced in Club Penguin in March of 2012, just eight months before Operation Blackout. The only appearance before this was an elite penguin force, where they are found in the top secret dojo EPF room, right as G, Rookie, and Jetpack Guy are first hearing about the EPF. She uses this room to train elite puffles and to hide her identity when becoming a public figure. PH chose to abandon her pink collar and switch it for brown with long brown hair. In fact, her very first appearance is what proved this had to be the case to me. When you first go to meet her, the director is speaking to you on a screen and only after the call ends does PH walk into the screen. The fact the player could not see her before this point means that she must have been in the side room where she was speaking as the director. The silhouette could either be a simple computer edit or a dojo screen which has been shown to give the exact same effect that the director has. And as the page's relationship with Antarctic, just like Sensei and Rookie, she has been trusted in taking over the advice column in the newspaper showing that the two are close at the very least. And in addition to all of this, PH even notes that she thinks Rookie is a good agent. G and Jetpack Guy are often seen telling Rookie to be more careful, but PH doesn't, only praising him. This must mean that she knows something the others don't know about him, despite never seeing it interacting with each other. Who could know such things about this agent? And who's the only penguin that has power to keep Rookie in his position? Surely, only the director. Going back to the very first PSA mission where Antarctic loses her puffles, who has the best skills to make sure the puffles were safe at all times on top of the tallest mountain? So it was a training exercise and Antarctic was involved, but she was not the one pulling the strings. Why didn't we see her in this mission? I hear you ask. Well, if you interact with a circle in the ice rink when looking for clues for the missing puffles, a penguin pokes up from underneath. Why were they there? That was PH, keeping an eye on you. Yes, they're red, but her change from pink to brown shows that she is the only mascot with the ability to change colours. If she can do it once, she can definitely do it again. That way, even if the agent did spot her, they would not be able to recognise her later on. The final piece of evidence, in case there is any doubt still in your mind, is her catchphrase, Crike. PH is Australian, and Australia doesn't exist. That is the ultimate cover. Puffle Handler is the director of the EPF. So there we go. One of gaming's biggest mysteries revealed, and one of the biggest cover-ups exposed. Now we know who the real director is. This not only explains why Antarctic revealed herself after being in a life-threatening situation because her secret identity was revealed, it also explains why they never went after her again. This also works as directly linking the events of the DS game to the online game, which doesn't happen anywhere else. Also explaining PH's change in look and lack of appearances in later missions. She can't be seen around and beyond the screen as the director too. Now replaying those missions gives a whole new perspective. What else will this help us make sense of? 
And what other mysteries are there to uncover on this chilling island? Let me know what you think of this reveal, and if you think I missed anything at all, please let me know in the comments. And what mystery should we unravel next? Do you believe that Pavel Handler is a director, or are you still brainwashed to think it's somebody else? I thought that Gary might have been evil the entire time. Or I thought that he might have been working with Herbert the entire time. And we were going to find out that Gary had been evil this entire time and that the director was evil. I thought it was going to be this whole backstabbing situation. 